As we gather to remember and give thanks for Kadri's life, we hear thoughts, memories, and reflections from members of our community. And if those who are in the balcony would want to make your way down here who are sharing reflections, now is the time to do so. Nathan, let's start with you since you're down here. Okay, so the first time I met Quadri, I call him Q. Um, I was playing basketball. I saw her one day. And I said, "Girl, why are you so short?" She looked up at me and said, "Why are you so dumb for asking?" <laughs> <laughs> and so that pretty much displayed Q. Um, you know, every one of y'all here, she had impact on each and every one of y'all, including me. So she was so. God, she was so sassy. God, I have mercy on her soul. But she also made every one of y'all smile, laugh. Most importantly, she made us come as a community. I mean, look at everybody around you. When's the last time this place has been like this as a community? And so I remember, um, you know, playing basketball and everything. I remember the first time I went for Leah. I would, she looked right at me. She was the reason why I got encouragement playing basketball. She is one of the reasons why I am a better basketball player today. And so I really want to leave you with this. This is John um, eleven twenty five. It says, you don't have to wait for the end. I am right now. Res- resurrection and life. The one who believes in me, even though he or she dies, will live. And everyone who lives believing in me does not ultimately die at all. Do you believe this? Time for all of us is short. Nobody in this place expected for what Q to happen. No one did. And so we need to cherish, we need to cherish one another for now because we have no idea when every last, when it could be our last breath. We never knew that. I never knew that Saturday after her scrimmage, you know, I didn't get to say bye to her. Nobody else in this place did either. So, I want to thank everybody for being here, for supporting Q and everything. We all, we all love you, and just thank you. We had open gym and we seen everyone coming in and you just see this short four nine girl coming in and I'm like, whoa, is there a recruit? Coach there a recruit coming in or something or anything? And she starts like shooting threes. I'm like, that's not her age. Like, what is she doing? And then she starts making them and she's warming up and all that. And I was like, oh, all right, well, I see where she's going with this. So we start playing and she's just going up and down the court, scoring layups quick as ever. And I was like, I'm really gonna like this girl. So like the next day, um, we finally talked and I was like, oh, hi, my name's Sejan. And she's like, oh, my name's Kaji. I was like, call me Q. And then out of nowhere, she's like, oh, you gonna be my wife. And I was like, what? <laughs> she's like, oh no, you gonna be my wife. And I was like, okay, all right, I, I guess, I'm not. <laughs> and, um, by then, I guess half the school knows I was Q's wife. She let that be known quick. <laughs> but she, me and her had a, a different bond, special bond, than um, the rest of the team. And I'm pretty sure they can back me up on that. I don't know. She just, she's one of the few people who um, accepted me quickly. She didn't turn away or judge me. She came with open arms and... I mean, I could be a little intimidating to talk to, so she just, she embraced me, and 
when I started opening up and stuff, she still stayed. She didn't back away. Like, she didn't leave. She was like, oh, you're too different, so I'm not going to be your friend anymore. Like, she, she stayed, and we just had this bond. And one of my toughest times here was fighting out at a red shirt. So when I turned out, told her out of red shirt, she was so heartbroken. But then she's like, you know what, D? I'm going to play for you all year. Next season, it's me and you. And I always just kept that to heart because, you know, it's not a, it wasn't really about me at that time. I was just letting my teammates know that I'm going to be here supporting y'all. But then at the end, she came back and she was still supporting me. And, you know, when we run sprints with Coach and all that, she's always right next to me, pushing me. And sometimes I'd be like, you, like, stop standing next to me. Like, I'm trying to slack off a little bit. Like, come on. <laughs> like, <laughs> But every time coach is like, get on the line, and I look to my right or left, she she's right there. And I'm like, Q, go away. <laughs> like, let me slack off a little bit. She's like, no, no, like, you got to get ready. You got to be ready. And I just, I, I'm i grateful to, to have known her and share some type of bond with her because I never knew that someone like her can impact me so much in such a short amount of time. I mean, she's just like, she's really like a little sister I never had because I don't have a sister. I have four older brothers, only girl, so do the math on that. Um, she just always, she's always, she always makes sure I was okay every day, every time she sees me. She always calls me sweetie. I don't know why, but she's like, hey, sweetie, how you doing? Like, how's your day going? Like, she's always, she always made sure I was okay, and that's the type of personality Q had. She was so free spirit. Like she, you never knew what was wrong with her because she never, she never showed it. She never showed us what was going on in her personal life during practice or out of practice. She just, she just so happy and free, and I'm, it's just real tough for me to grasp that you know this had happened to her because. Last night, I was just like, you know, like Nathan said, I saw her at the scrimmage. She got feisty with one of the other players, and she was so mad. And her high-pitched voice, like, oh, no, like, you ain't going to do nothing. Like, what's up? Like, all that stuff. So we had to calm Q down a little bit. And then we thinking that she's going to come back Tuesday, ready to practice. And, you know, this happened. So like Nathan said, cherish everybody. Cherish who you love. I mean, if you're fighting with someone, forget about it, fix it, because you never know when, you know, it's going to be the last. And tell, tell someone you don't know you love them. Maybe they need it. You don't know what's going on in everyone's life. So, um, like, Nathan said, I appreciate everyone being here for Q, because she's impacted everyone in this room somehow. And she's looking down, eating ice cream, Cause she loved ice cream, guys. I'm telling you, <laughs> one time she had four cones of ice cream. I don't know how, but she had it. She ate it, and she was good after that. So I really appreciate everyone your love and support. And rest in peace, Q. I love you. Power, and love, and you know, smile, energy just brought us all together today, huh? Last night, I'll be honest with y'all. I was thinking of the right words. <laughs> the right words to say that'll measure up to what Kadri meant to us, to me personally. Um, I'll share this with you, and it'll be the first time anybody will know besides me and her. Um, a lot of things happened in my personal life at the beginning of this semester. I was ready to quit basketball. My confidence was at an all-time low. God, I was crying one time after practice. It was the first week of practice. I mean, I'm the, always the last one at the locker room and Kadri stay there. So he was like, what's wrong, kid? So 
she goes, I go like, I don't think I'm good enough. <laughs> and <laughs> God, we laughed. <laughs> She goes like, are you stupid? <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Like, and I go like, what? You know? And she goes like, You're my Puerto Rican fireball. <laughs> <laughs> like what? <laughs> this team wouldn't be the same without you. That's when I went and spoke to Coach Scott about my problems. You know, and I'm just slow, I'm really slow, like, I'm powerful, but I'm really slow when it comes to running. Oh, I made that, yeah. <laughs> um, in Kaji, at the end of every sprint, she gave me a smile. Water break, she gave me a high five. There, there are no words to describe. There's no words to say how beautiful she was inside of it. Oh, man. And I don't want you guys, it'll be hard, but I don't want you guys to hurt. Because she wouldn't want that. I was, I was trying to think of things to say, and every memory that I thought of, I smiled. She didn't let nobody know that she was hurting. She didn't let anybody know that anything was wrong with her. Every time you saw her, she had a smile. Like, but I will tell you this, when she didn't sit with us in the lunchroom, I could see her with Nate in the little round tables. She always had her little ice cream cone with vanilla cone, and she did, was used to smile at me and go like, what's up, Kim? I'm like, I called you. But, smile, because she impacted us in so many positive ways, yeah. Smile, because she brought us together. Smile, because she made us believe in ourselves. I love you a little bit. Thank you. I think I'll be rounding it out as one of the basketball team players. Um, first, I just want Q to feel this community right here. So if you could do me a favor, and grab the hands of the people next to you. Um, this is the Bethel College community, and I just want her to feel all of this um, as I say a little something. Um, the first word that comes to mind when I hear Kadri's name is fierce. If anybody saw our scrimmage on Saturday, you saw it because she was fierce in the way that she created a presence on the court as a force not to be reckoned with. She was fierce in all of her friendships, always offering a hug or a laugh with a friend. But I think most of all, I think Kadri lived her life fiercely and fearlessly. She was sassy and spunky because she wouldn't take anything she didn't deserve. She knew how to fight for herself and she was rewarded from her hard work. Two months was not nearly long enough to get to know the type of person that Q was, but that doesn't mean that we won't remember how she changed each and every one of us. Um, a story that I shared last night a little bit um, last week we started doing some of our, um, during the season, conditioning and uh, lifting, and so Q was my partner, and one of the workouts that we had to do involved pull-ups. Um, I didn't think it was hardly fair for her because we were partners, and I can't do a pull-up on my own, so she had to help me. Um, you know, she's just like lifting me up, and then we switch it to her, and she hops up there, and I grab her ankle, she turns around and asks me what I'm doing. <laughs> 
you know, I just thought I was going to help her. Um, she turns around and just pulls out about 10, 10 in a row, and she's good to go, and we move on to the next thing. And that was pretty incredible. As a team, Q taught us uh, that size doesn't mean anything. She was small in size, yet mighty in strength. And as individuals, she's still teaching us a thing or two. Um, my prayers are with the tall of her family as they celebrate the life that Q was able to live here on earth and approach the future with reassurance that she is living the life that we are all striving to live with our Lord and Savior. God bless this community and Bethel. Um, we'll love and miss you always, Q. As I stand up here to talk about Q, there's nothing I can say that you all already didn't know or don't know what to share about her as a classmate, as a teammate, as a friend, and as a sister. I am beyond blessed for the two months I had to share with Kadri as one of her basketball coaches. She had the natural ability to brighten up the mood and the moment she walked into weights and or practice because she always had a huge smile on her face and, and was ready to work. Q had a fire in her eyes that I admired most about her because she never let her size be an excuse as to why she wasn't a basketball player. When her and I would talk, she would always say her favorite thing to hear before games was, oh, that girl is so small. She would say, coach, they may think I am small, but they have no idea how big my fight is. And I feel bad when they have to find out the hard way. <laughs> It never fell, just that simple statement always put a smile on my face because I could see the drive and determination in her eyes. She was always so positive and a natural leader on the court because she put every fourth of every ounce that she had in that little body of heart and effort on the court during workouts and practice. I think even as coaches they can vouch with me when they say she got us fired up a few times. She and I shared a special quote that we both made up specifically for her, and that was little in size, beast at heart. Every time she finished a workout first or was leaving practice and I would see her, I would tell her that. And she would smile and she'd say, you already know, coach. There's a ton of things I could stand up and say about her, guys, that just wouldn't do any justice as a coach and as a team. Um, but in two short months that I had the opportunity to know her as a player and a person outside of the court, she impacted my life. And she would always tell me she was going to steal my clothes because she, <laughs> she says she liked everything I wore, whether it be basketball gear or work clothes. I didn't think I had that great of a style, but I'll take it. Everything we do this year for her as it, it, everything we do this year as a team is for her. We are going to love and miss her. Um, a player that couldn't be here today, she asked me to share something for her. Um, she said, Q, you were too young, too innocent, too pure, and too precious to us for any of us to understand why God had to take you away. But irregardless, I trust him, and I know that everything happens for a reason, even if I hate it. You gave all, your all for us every time you step foot on that court, and I promise you we're going to do the same for you. Every game, every practice, every drill is for you. We're all ready to fight on that court for you. I know I didn't get to physically tell you how much you meant to me and the team before you left. But I hope and pray that you know how much you were loved and cared about each and every day before October 20th. Because it's going to be hard not being able to look down and see that smile. I love you, Kadri. God bless you all. Um, certain players come along that teach you so much more than you're, you're able to teach them. And, and Q was one of those people. 
She had a passion for life that was contagious. She had a love for all that was second to none. And she lived her life to the fullest every single day with the biggest smile on her face while doing it. She taught us that it is not about the size of someone that matters, but the size of the heart that matters more. She was an, inspira an inspirational leader who had her teammates back no matter what. She also taught us that courage and strength comes in all different shapes and sizes. Q may have gone to be home, but she was lent here first to leave an impact on everyone she met. I would say Q succeeded in that. My favorite Bible verse is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For the Spirit of God, for the Spirit God gave us, does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self discipline. Discipline. I would say Q had this spirit. In practice, we have a thing where we recognize something that's amazing or something that just happened that we, we really want to share with everyone. And I invite everybody, we do a two clap system. So we want to recognize how amazing Q was. And if you guys wouldn't mind, go ahead and give us two claps. Thank you. who you meant the world to a lot of people in this room and um, you pushed me through a lot of a lot of struggles that I that I have and that I had um, that Kadri was was working with me um, as my physical trainer to get me in into better shape and um, and Nate was also um, helping me in that, and just a day, um, a routine day, um, she and Nate decided that I was to do jumping jacks, and so um, I started doing jumping jacks, and because of a, of a injury that I sustained during the summer, I. I popped my shoulder out of place, and um, as soon as I popped my shoulder out of place, Connery rushed up to me and said, "Are you okay?" And then she proceeded to get an ice bag for me and put on my shoulder and said, "This is only a twenty-minute break." <laughs> <laughs> And so, um, <laughs> so after that, I proceeded to do butt kicks and high knees, and and it just, I think, so as a testament to her drive for everyone's betterment, and and she, no matter who you were, no matter if you believe something totally opposite than what she believed, she was going to push you to become a better person. And, and she did that to this Bethel community. She, even in death, has, has brought us together has brought the Bethel community together to be better. And that is something that Kadri's legacy should be for everyone to try to be better because of her. And to pull some self-confidence out of that. And And no matter, I just see her just saying, Max, I see you slacking. Just get back to the weight room. And I think that is something that Audrey should be remembered for, is, is her just working out the kinks and everyone. And so, thank you.
Kaji's roommate, and over the summer, he got that paper that says, this is who your roommate is, here's her phone number, contact her. So I did, you know, and uh, she was asking, so what sport do you play? I was like, well, I'm the goalkeeper for the soccer team. And she was like, oh, yeah, I play basketball. And she was like, but I'm really short. I was like, yeah, I'm short, too. I'm 5'5". Five five. You know, I can barely touch the goalpost when I jump. And she was like, dang, girl, I'm shorter than you are. I was like, what? <laughs> and so then I got to meet her on the first day, moving in. And I was like, okay, she wasn't lying. <laughs> <laughs> and she never let me give up on myself. I had a rough patches coming into this semester over the summer. And I was going to quit soccer. Um, I wasn't going to come here. And she told me, like, if I don't get to meet you, I'm going to be pissed. So let me meet you. <laughs> so I was like, OK. <laughs> um, she has impacted me gratefully, just as the basketball players. Uh, they have helped me through this. Let me sit with them at lunch the other day and let me cry on their shoulders, and as well as the soccer girls. Um, Whitney and I can't even describe how thankful we are for you guys for always being there. And I heard that you guys came to my door <laughs> to make sure that I was okay. So I just want to say thank you and that Kadri will always be missed by me and her, her squad. <laughs> so thank you. yesterday and I got the news but before that I had went to Walmart because I was thinking when Key gets home we're gonna party it out like we do to eat chips and queso eat cereal straight out of the box <laughs> and then Wick came into my room and told me everything that happened and I just stood in shock I couldn't believe it of course I cried but it didn't really hit me until this morning. But I didn't hear her either banging on my door or just hearing her voice. I just, I see her everywhere I go. Just walking to class, I normally see her just walking around with Nate. And then today in class, me and Whit's teacher, John, we started talking about her. And he's like, the, very, the last memory I have of her is she and Nate were walking on a sidewalk and they're playing a game by jumping on leaves. <laughs> I'm going to miss her so much, as much as all of you will. I love you, too. Audrey. She was excited to be a college student, a college athlete, bouncing into my office. Tiny. She was shorter than I am. There's a twinkle in her eye, and you wonder, okay, what kind of mischief is up next? Cheery, energetic, like a hummingbird flitting from one flower to the next and always moving. Mojo's drink in hand. Way too much caffeine. And she walks into my class a bit late because... Her college issues essay for first year seminar. Student athletes and time management. Her struggles with sleep deprivation. Because she's trying to grab all that life at college had to offer. Netflix. <laughs> Nate. Only two months to be a college student, a college athlete. It's gone. Rest in peace, Cadre. We, family, friends, 
fellow threshers. We're in that liminal space. Yeah, Outcast United readers, you know that word. We're caught between our grief at your death, Kadri, and at the awareness that we're alive and have to keep living. So be gentle with each other. When grief catches you unaware, when you imagine you hear Kadri's voice or see her in a crowd or there's a memory that overwhelms you, be gentle with yourself. And when you see another caught in grief, be gentle with them. Offer a tissue, a gentle touch of your hand, a hug. Know that you're not alone, that we are together, and we will hold each other up. Rest in peace, Godfrey.